Hi, everybody. Okay, so the last topic from chapter two uh, is a, it's a short section and it's about logical deduction. And in some ways, uh, it's a little strange that this is such a short section because logical deduction is kind of what logic is all about. Logical deduction is what, you, what lets you draw conclusions from statements. So if I tell you that, uh, you know, if I uh, own a car, then I'm from South Dakota, to take a silly example. And then I tell you that I own a car, uh, you should be able to conclude that I'm from South Dakota, at least if um, all those statements that I started with are true. So it's logical deduction, which allows you to take simple statements and draw conclusions from them. And I think the reason this section is so short is because a lot of what we've done basically already answers questions about deduction. So let's just look at the ideas in this brief section and see if we can make some sense out of them. So there are three types of logical deduction that are pointed out in the, in the text. The most famous one goes back to ancient times is what's called the syllogism. And the syllogism works like this. Um, you imagine that you have two statements, P and Q, and you know two things. You know that the implication is true and that the initial statement is true. So let we can put some terminology here. So P here is called the hypothesis. Q is called the conclusion. And we have an implication, P implies Q. And these are all supposed to be statements. So P is supposed to be a statement that's true or false. Q is supposed to be a statement that's true or false. And then P implies Q is automatically a statement, which is true or false. And a lot of what we've been doing up to this point is thinking about um, truth tables where, depending on whether P and Q are true, whether or not the implication P implies Q is true. Deduction tries to go in the opposite direction. And here's, we can write it very, very simply. This is the idea behind a syllogism. If P implies Q, is true and P is true, then Q is true. And here's how we can be sure of this. Let's look at the truth table for implication. which we should know very well by now. And let's look at what we know here. We know that P implies Q is true. So we know we're in this case, this case, or this case. And we know that P is true. So we're in this case. So the only row of the table that can possibly apply is this row, because that's the only way that both P can be true and P implies Q can be true. And you see that we can conclude from that, that sure enough, Q is true. So this is the kind of logical reasoning that we use all the time when we say, um, if you want to be on time, you better set your alarm clock. Uh, and if you want to be on time is true, and if the hypop if the implication, if you want to be on time, then you better set your alarm clock is true, then you better set your alarm clock is also true. Um, so typically what we have in our head are a bunch of these implication statements. If you do this, then something's gonna happen. And we do this deduction kind of instinctively where we say, okay, well, that something is true, so I better do that thing. Okay, let's look at another example. This is called indirect proof. And we're in the same situation as before to some extent, namely we have an implication. We have two statements, P and Q, and we have an implication which we assume is true. So um, this might be the implication that um, if I own a car, then I live in South Dakota. Or if 
x is a set with three elements. Then the power set of x has eight elements. So in this case, p says x has three elements. Q says P of X has eight elements. And we know that P implies Q is true. So in this type of deduction, instead of assuming that P is true, we assume that Q is false. And the conclusion we make then is that P is false. So if you want to sort of write this symbolically, if P implies Q, true, and not Q is true, meaning Q is false, then you can conclude not P is true. In other words, P is false. And again, if we look at the truth tables, we can see how this works. We have P, Q, P implies Q, true, 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 false, 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 true, true, false, false, true. And so we know that P implies Q is true, so we're in one of these three situations. And we know that Q is false. So the only ones where Q is false are here and here. And so the only row where both of those things are true is this row here where P is false. And in my example over here, what this would amount to saying is that if, if X is a set and the power set of X does not have eight elements, then we know that X does not have three elements. So that's called indirect proof. OK, here's one more example um, So it's a, of a kind of reasoning, maybe the simplest of all, but for some reason it comes last. So suppose you have two statements like P says, uh, I live on the moon, and Q says, I love math. And suppose I tell you that P or Q is true. And then you find out that P is false. Well, then it must be the case that Q is true. So in other words, if I tell you that I live on the moon or I love math, well, I don't live on the moon, so I must live math, must love math. And again, you can see this from the truth tables. If you write P, Q, P or Q, remember that the V is, a, is an or, and you write true, true, true. Remember how the or works. If even, if even one of them is true, then the statement is true. If both are false, then it's false. And what situation are we in here? Well, we know that P or Q is true, so we're either in this case, this case, or this case. And we know that P is false, which means we're in this case or this case. And the only row which is where, where both P or Q is true and P is false, we must be in this row here, and that means Q must be true. So one way to think about deduction is that it's whereas the, the logical operators let you take simple statements and build more complicated ones, deduction takes more complicated statements where you know the truth values of some of the statements that make them up. And you are able then to deduce the truth values of the other statements that, that are not specified in advance. It's again, it's like a kind of algebra. You're solving for the truth value of one of the statements. But in practice, this is the kind of reasoning that we do all the time. Uh, the most 
commonly messed up one is this one. And we talked earlier about the converse, where it's not the case that if Q is, if P is, implies Q is true and Q is true, it does not imply that P is true. And you can see that here. Let's look at one more case. P implies Q true and Q true. And let's look at the truth table. And now we're in the case where P implies Q is true. So we're in one of these rows and Q is true. So we're in one of these rows. And you see the problem from the truth table. You can't tell which of these two rows you might be in. So you can't conclude anything about the truth or falsehood. And that's why this the difference between the an implication that goes one direction is different from an implication which goes in the other direction. But that if you if you reason from not Q, then you're in this row and that does carry some information. So that's uh, the real trap to watch out for. This is uh, going to be the last video from chapter two. So I'll see you on the other side when we move on.